Hey, it's Steve. In this video, I'm going to show you from start to finish how I built this one by six and a half foot HO scale switching layout. So this layout went through some changes along the way and I had originally planned on it being a roughly 11 foot long modular switching layout that would be along the wall in our upstairs game room in the location where my old five by 10 foot HO layout used to be. However, that space wasn't going to work anymore and so I decided to make it a six and a half foot long switching layout that would fit between two bookshelves in our office and also fit in the back of our car if I decided to take it to a train show. But then I redid the floor in the office and rearranged things there and so it no longer would fit in the office. So now it resides in our garage above my workbench. Anyway, with those changes in mind, let's look at how I built everything. I started out using two T-Track modules from Masterpiece Modules. The original modular layout was going to have two four-foot sections and one three-foot module section. However, the new layout used a four-foot section and a three-foot module section with six inches cut off one end. These modules go together easy. A little sanding of the parts is all that's really needed. And then you just glue and fit the pieces together. And a hammer is usually needed to help fully seat all the pieces since the fittings are pretty tight. But once they are together, they're extremely strong and extremely rigid and uh, make a really nice module section if you do want to actually use them for modules. I glued and clamped two of the modules together, then glued and tacked on some wood trim pieces to give the layout a more finished look. I also built a backdrop that was attached to the back of the layout using some poplar planks. The trim and backdrop were eventually redone, but this did serve as the initial layout base for a couple of years. The modules do have a one inch deep recess that allows you to put in a layer of foam insulation board. I used some foam board adhesive to glue in the insulation board panels to the top of the layout. In retrospect, I should have removed the top portion of the module frames at the joint between the two module sections at the middle of the layout and then used one long piece of foam board for the entire thing. However, because I didn't, I had to sand everything smooth and then use some drywall compound to try and level out the entire layout surface. I painted the backdrop a light blue color, but because I never really did like it, uh, the whole backdrop eventually did get replaced later in the layout build. I also gave the layout a coat of stain to match our office shelves, though again, because it didn't end up in the office and ended up in the garage, that later was painted over when I turned the layout into a shadow box uh, before its permanent home in the garage above my workbench. Next, it was time to lay track. I used microengineering code 70 track for the layout. I positioned the turnouts on the layout and figured out what size pieces of flex track I needed to cut to link all of them together. Then I took all those pieces to the workbench added rail joiners and connected all of them, soldering all the rail joints. I soldered feeder wires to the bottom of the rail joints as well. And then this way I had the entire unit completed that I could just drop onto the layout with the wiring already in place. I marked places on the layout where I needed the wires to go through as well as where I wanted uncoupling magnets and then drilled and cut out those openings. I filled in the openings around the magnets with more patching plaster, glued down the track and then spray painted everything with camouflage brown spray paint. Next, I attached my Caboose Industries ground throws to the turnouts, connected all the wires to a plug at the front of the layout, and then used a battery-powered Roku hand throttle to do a test run on the layout. With everything working uh, with the track, it was at this point time to go ahead and work on the structures and pavement areas. I made templates for the structure base areas using foam core board and figured out where I wanted all the pavement areas to go. I used some patching plaster with some tan paint mixed in for the pavement areas, spreading as even a coat as I could across the areas where I wanted the pavement to be. Then I sanded everything down after the first coat had dried, and then applied a second coat of the plaster in order to get a nice smooth pavement surface. I removed the foam core board forms and templates and then used a ruler and knife to score expansion joints in the concrete areas, and then removed the plaster along the rails and cleaned up the edges. With the pavement largely done, I shifted gears to building the layout structures themselves. The large structure complex in the layout was built using Walther's modern concrete warehouse kits. I used the regular warehouse kit and the cold storage warehouse kit, which is basically the same structure but with additional detail parts included. These are modular building kits and so you can arrange the wall panels, loading doors, windows, etc. however you really want to. Since these were going up against the backdrop, I didn't need to actually build a back to the structures, and so I had plenty of leftover wall panels for other projects down the road. I glued the loading door and wall panel sections together such that the loading doors would be spaced perfectly for 40-foot boxcars, and then just added pieces so the building size matched the template that I had made. 
you can see here what the finished wall sections look like. While I can connect a DCC unit to the layout for operation when I want to, I wanted a regular DC throttle in place as well for general use. I decided to use a Kato unit, but wanted to mount it upside down so it was easier to use standing up. So I opened up the unit, flipped around the controls inside, peeled off the label on top, turned that around and stuck it back down on top. I won't show you all the details here since I have a full video on this, but there is a link above if you want to watch the full video on how I did this modification. For the structure on the left hand side of the layout, I decided to raid my bin of old structures and use parts from my Walther's Bakery kit for that structure. I glued those in place in the corner of the layout, added a bit of gravel around the tanks, and then a bit of grass and a tree on the other side to help hide where the building meets the backdrop. Next, I worked on building roofs for the larger structures on the layout, cutting pieces of roof sections from the building kit to fit the triangular building shape that I was building. I used a piece of pine on the back of the structures to help connect the two sides of the structure as well as the roof together, and that really added a lot of strength and rigidity to the entire structure unit itself. I added some scene master lights above the loading doors and then weathered the structure with a black wash and some pan pastels. I glued the structures to the layout, then added a ballast mix along the front edge of the structures, along with some static grass tufts, some broken pallets, and some cardboard box pieces. On the larger structure, I had one of the loading doors open, and so I built a little room behind the door that I painted gray, and then I added a forklift and a few details to make it look like the structure had an actual interior. I wanted a drainage creek along the front of the layout, and so I carved that into the foam and built up the banks using some sculpt mold. For the culvert opening, I used the top of an N-scale tunnel portal that I had laying around, then I painted the inside of the portal black and the portal itself a gray color. I painted the drainage creek area itself brown, added some dirt, and then a layer of static grass along the banks. When testing the layout with the structures in place, it turned out that the track was a little bit too close to the loading doors and that the cars would scrape against a couple of them. So I had to shift the track over, but I did damage it while trying to do so, and so I had to fully remove that section of flex track and glue down another piece of track. I used another old building section from my used building bin and glued that to the other end of the layout and then used some trees and shrubs and grass to kind of help hide the edges of that structure. I then ballasted all of the remaining track areas, adding some ground foam in between the track areas and then glued everything down with scenic cement. Next, I worked on making a couple of large trees for the layout using some sagebrush trunks and pieces of super tree material for the smaller branches. I won't go into detail here since I eventually removed them anyway as I kind of got in the way of operations but all I did was to take the resulting tree armatures, spray them with camouflage brown spray paint, I covered them with a few layers of ground foam and scale leaves, and I had some pretty nice looking large trees for the layout. But again, they were just kind of hard to reach around when I was trying to uncouple cars and so forth, and so I eventually just removed them later on. At this point, I finished out the remaining ballasting around the turnouts, added a black wash to the track to give the appearance of grease and oil stains, and then added some additional scenery bits here and there. One of the last scenery pieces to do was to add some fencing to the layout. I used an Alcom Scale Models fencing kit which has some nice barbed wire along the top which I like. I glued segments together, added some pieces of piano wire every few fence posts, and then poked holes in the scenery where I wanted each of those wire posts to go, and then glued everything in place. The fencing looks really nice and is a fairly easy kit to use and install. The barbed wire in particular though is kind of delicate, so you do have to be careful not to tear that off when you are installing the fence. The last scenery item to do was to pour some resin in place for the drainage creek. I used two-part Envirotex epoxy for the water, mixed up a small batch of that, and poured it in place. I used a lighter to help remove the air bubbles, but blowing on the epoxy through a straw can also work really well. So at this point the layout was basically done, but then I decided to redo things. I didn't quite like how the scenery looked, didn't like the backdrop, and I wanted a way to cover the layout so it would stay clean in the garage. So I decided to build the layout into a shadow box and take care of some of the other things I didn't really like about the layout, and also finish up the wiring of the structure lighting. First, I needed to cut out some openings for battery holders and for a toggle switch to power and control the layout lighting. I drilled holes in the corners of the openings that I needed to make for the battery holders and then used a spade bit to drill a hole for the toggle switch. I used my coping saw to cut out the opening for the battery holders. I test fit the battery holder, then glued it in place with some hot glue. This way if I had to remove it eventually, it would be a little bit easier to do that. 
I attached the toggle switch to a leftover cover from a project box and then hot glued that in place as well. With the lights wired up, I wanted to move on to some scenery work. While the scenery was actually already done, I didn't really like how it looked. So I, re I removed the largest of the trees and then scraped off some of the existing scenery. I decided to use a static grass mat that I cut to size for the front of the layout. I applied some additional pieces of shrub material that I had saved over from the original scenery and then glued everything in place with my usual diluted matte media mix. Next, since I wanted to build the layout in a shadow box, I needed to remove the existing backdrop. I built the shadow box out of half inch birch plywood and I ripped the plywood down into approximately a 14 inch width to match the width of the layout and then test fit the end pieces. I had to splice together a few pieces of plywood for the top since I didn't have a single piece long enough for the entire six and a half foot stretch of the layout. I test fit that and then sanded everything down with my orbital sander, patched the seams, and I painted the inside of all three pieces with white paint to serve as a primer. I glued and nailed the sides to the top of the shadow box unit and then glued and nailed on a one by two inch piece of clear pine to the top front area to add additional rigidity to the long span of the plywood. I test fit the shadow box on the layout once again and then took a piece of quarter inch MDF and propped it up against the back of the layout. I used a pen to trace out where I needed to cut the MDF to fit snugly against the side and the top. I cut that piece to size and then took my next sheet of MDF and again trace out the area I needed to cut and then cut that piece to size as well. I used my framing square to make sure everything was lined up properly and proceeded to glue on a splice plate on the back along with some strips of one half inch by two inch pieces of poplar. I also glued down a couple pieces of MDF on the bottom that extended down a few inches below the backdrop so I could attach that to the back of the layout base as well. Next, I glued the backdrop in place using clamps to hold everything securely while the glue dried. While the dogs checked out my progress, I used some patching plaster to fill in the gaps and seams. I later came back and used some painter's caulk along the joint between the backdrop and top as well. I wanted a very pale blue backdrop color, so I mixed up some leftover white paint cans that I had into one can, and then added a dollop of dark blue paint and mixed everything up thoroughly. I painted the entire interior of the shadow box with the light blue paint mixture, let that dry, and then added a second coat. I also wanted some trees on the backdrop between two of the structures on the left hand side of the layout. So I cut a piece of chipboard to fit the opening and then glued on pieces of super tree material, also called seafoam, uh, to that piece of chipboard. That was then spray painted with camouflage brown spray paint and then when that was dry it was soaked with diluted matte medium. A couple layers of green ground foam were then added along with additional coats of the glue mix. While that dried I worked on adding the lighting to the top of the shadow box. I used two stick-on LED strip lights that I picked up from Home Depot for about $10 each. These are USB powered and can be powered for hours using a small battery bank when the layout is traveling, or I can plug them into my outlet using a USB adapter when the layout is above my workbench. The color changing LED strips do have a slight bluish cast to them when they're in their white light mode, which does kind of enhance the blue color of the backdrop, but I might eventually add another strip of warm white LED lights to the top as well. With the painting done and the lights installed, I screwed the shadow box to the sides of the layout as well as the back and then glued on the tree background in place between those two structures on the left hand side of the layout. I did have to touch up the backdrop paint in a few spots where I had gotten some, some glue on it or where I had just scraped up the blue paint a little bit when trying to attach the backdrop to the layout. I glued and nailed a couple more pieces of 1x2 pine to the left and right side of the shadow box to complete that, and then put the layout up on blocks like an old car. I painted the exterior of the layout with black paint, including the original front fascia, and then after a second coat of paint, I put on a couple coats of my usual mix of matte and gloss medium to help protect the paint finish. To help hide the left side of the layout, I made several more trees using super tree armatures. I sprayed the plant material with camouflage brown spray paint, and when that was dry, I sprayed them down with diluted matte medium and covered them with a couple shades of ground foam and scale leaves. I poked holes in the scenery on the left side of the layout and then glued those trees in place to hide the end of the track on that side of the layout. These trees really improve the appearance of that end of the layout and make it look like the track continues off the side of the layout. With the layout basically done, I test fit it on the shelf above my work desk. I did have to take it back down though to remove a few screws that were in the way and then put it back up on the shelf. 
I temporarily held it in place with a clamp and then came back and added a few screws to keep it from falling off the shelf. Lastly, I made a cover for the front of the layout using a few black garbage bags. I taped them together with some packing tape, both front and back, and then wrapped the bottom of the bags around a strip of poplar board that I had and taped that in place as well. The board really just is there to add weight to help hold the plastic down against the front of the layout. I taped the top of the plastic to the top of the layout using some more packing tape and then tested rolling the plastic up and down to see how it would work. I'll eventually probably use something nicer than just these black garbage bags, but for now it works well and looks pretty decent. Finally, I numbered my car card slots once again, put my car cards back in place, and everything was ready for operations once again. And so that wraps up the 1 by 6 foot HO scale switching layout. Here's a look at how the layout is positioned above my work desk in the garage. I'll often operate the layout for 5 or 10 minutes while waiting for some glue or paint to dry on a project I have at the desk. And so having the layout right there at the, in the garage above the desk actually is something that I really like having in place now. There is a link in the description about how I operate these layouts using picture cards. So if you want to see that, uh, go ahead and look for those links below. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the Tulsa Spur layout project. This is a fun layout to operate and something like this can be a great first layout to build. If you are interested in building your own switching layout, do be sure to check out Lance Minheim's book on how to build a switching layout. I have a link to that below as well. It covers everything you need to know on how to build a layout like this in more detail than I covered here. And it is a book that I often still reference. Also, I am going to have some new videos coming out before too long on some new layout projects that I'm starting to work on, and so watch for those in the coming months. But anyway, that's all for now, and thanks for watching. Bye.